Well, I think the fundamental aspect of, of contrarian investing is really to think differently than the crowd. Because if you follow the crowd, cap rates compress, prices go up. So you really have to do independent thinking. And uh, a little anecdote from this morning, somebody was asking me about it. I said a good example, when I came in this morning, I did not check my coat downstairs. I put my coat up here because I knew that if I checked it downstairs, it was going to be a long line when I left. So you got to just look at things a little differently than the obvious. I think it's a mixture between uh, nature and nurture. It starts with risk tolerance. You know, there's some people who fight to stay in the status quo, and this is in all aspects of life, irrespective of the qualities of it, because they feel safe. Um, other people are more willing to adventure out. Uh, I have that personality, and I also, partially because, to me, the status quo is often not ideal, and because I realize that this is a very dynamic world, and if you're not changing, if you're not adapting, you're being left behind. Um, so, I think you have to look at those two personality traits, and then the learning comes in. And if you have an appetite for risk, and that can be not only financial risk, risk of thinking and being wrong, because you can't always be right, especially when you're doing something innovative or unusual. I think that there's a tendency, certainly in the real estate business, to fall in love with your own ideas. And um, often ideas work for a period of time in a given set of circumstances. But it's important to recognize when those circumstances have changed or that the entry pricing has changed because other people see the opportunity and then it's no longer as compelling as it was before. So you can't keep doing the same thing regardless of circumstances, even if it worked extremely well for you. We have certain things that we're pursuing that uh, what, what tends to happen is market niches open up and they last for a while and then they close because more players realize that there are good opportunities and they start bidding up prices. Uh, right now we're uh, big buyers of under-occupied office buildings. Uh, where, where the existing occupancy is much lower than the sub-markets, and those tend to be heavily discounted. We're buying uh, retail, shopping centers, and uh, malls, because cap rates are in the double digits. And um, uh, we, although we understand the e-commerce problem, we think it's perceived worse than it is, and that there's still a future for uh, retail and for more. And then we've also been buying in Europe because we feel that, uh, um, and it's already evidence, but we started this two or three years ago, that Europe's recession would be coming to an end and their economy would be growing, which is what has happened over the last 24 months. Uh, we ended up taking a large position in Holland because that was a environment that was heavily, heavily affected by their recession and there were great buying opportunities for us.